Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for Thursday, January 18th of 2024. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Let's go ahead and hop into these astrological transits so we can see how you can be better prepared to navigate these celestial energies. Having to get used to making these a day in advance. I feel like I'm going to slip up one of these days and say the wrong day. But um, hopefully this guy, hopefully this works out for you guys, me making them earlier. Because I want you guys to be as prepared as possible. Especially considering what's going on in the astrology, what's going to be happening this year, and how we are building up to one of the most important weekends of the entire year and probably of your entire life. Not even, not even joking, not even sugarcoating it. We're gearing up for a very, very intense weekend, and it's going to be cool. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be inspiring. It's going to be enlightening. I don't want you guys to be afraid of this weekend. Just know that it's going to be a very, very powerful one, and a new chapter is going to be commencing in the human story this weekend. So no pressure. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at that calendar today. Well, for the 18th, not really a whole lot's going on. We do have the moon that's going to enter into Taurus. It's going to be making some aspects today. It's going to be trining this Mercury and Mars and Capricorn as well as making a conjunction to Jupiter. So that's going to actually be a pretty nice energy there. And we do, of course, have Venus, which isn't quite coming into its square Neptune, but it is closing in on the square to Neptune. That's going to be happening on Friday. And of course, that Sun-Pluto conjunction is getting ready to commence. So let's hop into the charts. I got this set for 6 a.m. As you can see, the moon has ingressed into its exaltation of Taurus. The moon loves to be here. The moon loves to be here in Taurus. It can feel grounded emotionally. It's not all over the place. It's a little bit more calm and serene here while in Taurus. And we're going to have some very positive aspects, too, that it makes. We're going to see, of course, this moon as it makes its way throughout Taurus. We're going to see it hit that fifth degree around 12 p.m. And it's going to make a nice trine over to Mercury. Right, so we have a nice trend to Mercury. Also, even before that, it actually sextiles Saturn as well. So, like I said, this is going to be a very positive moon. This is going to be a very grounding kind of day Thursday. And we honestly, we need a day like this before we get into the intensity of the weekend. I, I don't think that there are no there. I mean, there are coincidences, but there are no coincidences in the astrology. Things happen at the time that they need to happen. And this is one of those blessings from the universe that we have a moon. It's, imagine if the moon was in Aries during this transition. Oh, that would be chaotic. That that World War III might actually like commence. I mean, World War III might already be happening and we don't realize it, but that might be like a physical representation of it happening if the moon was in Aries during this Sun-Pluto conjunction. Let's be grateful that's happening while the moon's in Taurus. <laughs> Not only that, but the moon in Taurus will actually will be trining that conjunction as it shifts into Gemini. So it's it this is a it's a huge deal. So this moon is going to first sextile over to Saturn, bringing up a nice beautiful opportunity for us to really get grounded in our values and to really, you know, see that the dream is possible. You know, we can make things happen, we can manifest things. Um, this brings up the opportunity to really see that, to really see that the things that we already have are beautiful. You know, this is going to, you know, this is about looking around at your current surroundings, looking around at your life and seeing the things that are working out for you, that are valuable. The people that do value you, the people that do see your worth, that's really what's important here. Now, of course, Saturn is this planet of adulting and the battle of attrition and growing up, but it's in here, it's here in Pisces. Where, you know, it's literally is navigating the seas. It's literally navigating the seas right now. And this moon in Taurus almost kind of functions as a bit of a lighthouse. You know what I mean? That's the way I kind of see this particular sextile. It almost functions as a bit of a lighthouse. And, you know, sometimes when we're out there navigating the sea of life, we can get lost. We can get, we can worry that we're never going to reach land. We're never going to reach our destination. 
And you have to just trust in that faith that there's a lighthouse out there, that there is that there is purpose out there, that there is someone out there looking out for you, that you have angels and guides and God is here looking out for you. You have to trust that's going to be there. And, you know, it's interesting how, like, you know, and the reason why I say this is a lighthouse, especially, is because Jupiter is here. And Jupiter is all about the vision, right? And Jupiter, if you think about the actual, like, lighthouse and that beam of light, it's kind of focused. It's not like a laser, but it's focused, right? So this is about seeing where the lighthouse is in life. You know, if you feel like you're navigating a storm right now, just have the courage and the faith to actually go out into the deck and to look for that lighthouse. You know what I'm saying? Because it's there. It most certainly is there. And, you know, sometimes we can get lost in our own thoughts. Sometimes we can get lost in our emotions and things from the past and memories and our traumas and our worries and our fears. And we forget to actually look for the lighthouse in life. And I felt like this moon here in Taurus making this sextile, it's on Jupiter, right? And this is going to be an amplifying energy, of course. It does make a nice little trine over to Mercury and Capricorn, too. So this is very positive, harmonious energy. Yeah, Mercury is still in its shadow, but it, the picture is starting to get clearer. I think that's one thing that we could take solace in a day like today is that the picture is getting clearer. We're having more clarity, and we're starting to realize that we can expand from the level that we are. We can move forward from the level that we are at, no matter where you are in life, no matter how much no matter how much money is in your bank, you know what I mean? No matter how much you feel like you might have accomplished or not accomplished, that you have a beautiful platform right now to spring forward into this next chapter, into this next era. And it's about recognizing that and recognizing the beauty that is there and trusting in the process. But, you know, this is, you still have to do the work. You know, Saturn still has to do the work. Saturn still has to navigate the ship. It's one thing to see the lighthouse, another thing to actually get the boat to the lighthouse. But, you know, you can do it. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. You can do it. And this is, you know, have fun with the journey. You know, I feel like sometimes, especially on the spiritual path, we forget to have fun along the way. It's like we're so we're so fast to try and reach godhood. We're so fast to try and reach like this perfect meditational state or guru state. We forget to have fun along the way. You know what I mean? So have fun along the way. You know, this, like I said, this moon trining over to Mercury is har a harmonizing aspect. Our minds, yeah, are still trying to figure out the big picture, trying to figure out how exactly we're going to climb this mountain. We already are climbing the mountain. I mean, the sun is already here and all the way at the end of Capricorn. So it's really more so us looking back and be like, damn, how did I climb this mountain? And maybe we're trying to recreate the wheel here. Maybe we're trying to recreate because now we're about to rocket off into space. And But that's going to require a whole different mindset and a whole different, you know, set of, I guess, rules that we have for ourselves or a whole set of a whole just, I guess, newfound confidence and realizing that We've been able to overcome many things as humans, and this is just another step in our evolution. Is this a major step in our evolution? Absolutely, but if you, it's not like the Sun and Pluto haven't conjuncted in Capricorn before. I mean, they, they some they've been doing it for like the last fifteen years, but it's not like the Sun and Pluto haven't conjuncted in Capricorn at these last few degrees. Like this, at the last fifteen years is the only time it's happened. No, it's happened. It happened two hundred and forty years before that, and two hundred forty years before that, and two, it's happened before. So. Yeah, we are kind of playing through another cycle, if you will. And in our lives, it's a, one of the biggest, most major cycles. But we can also, this is why it's important to meditate. This is why it's important to kind of trust and to go within. Because you, there is DNA within you that has the memory of what it's like to kind of get through these hurdles in life. You know, this is about and like, you know, recognizing and honoring your ancestors, you know, honoring your lineage. There's an aspect of that that comes that's coming through here, you know. So it's like, yeah, we're we're not meant to be able to be on an island on ourselves. No one is an island. We are all connected. And I think, you know, that's the one thing about this energy, too, is that. A lot of times when it comes to Capricorn energy, some people want to just do it all by themselves, but you still need a team. You still need a team. This is why Aquarius comes after Capricorn, because you can have an individual that achieves success and achieves the world and makes all this money and does all this stuff. But then what happens? They'll get to a place where it's like, okay, 
but what am I doing as a whole? Maybe they're left empty at the end of all that, no matter how much money they have in their bank, no matter what kind of accolades they have, no matter how many beautiful cars they have. It's like, well, what is your purpose? What are you doing for humanity? What are you, who, what people are you connecting to? And that's the Aquarius energy, right? So now we as a society are getting to this point where collectively, yes, maybe you in particular may not have a bunch of beautiful cars and a mansion and stuff like that, but we collectively have gotten to this point where we have reached this level of opulence that has not been seen on this planet for I don't think ever, honestly. I think we've had pockets of society that have reached levels like this, but I don't think it's ever been at the volume that it has been as right now. So the fact that we have reached a volume of opulence that has never been before seen, now we as humanity are coming together and trying to figure out, okay, what is the next step? What is the next step? What is the next logical step here? Because... We have to look at everything now. And that's why it feels so intense. Now, granted, like I said, this moon and Taurus is a beautiful thing because it's going to help to ground this energy. And this moon on Jupiter is going to help to maybe even ground your vision. And ground your vision as in like, not that you're not going to be able to see, but to or almost sort of like bring it in to settle it, if you will. You know what I'm saying? For it to not be as erratic and out there, it's going to help to kind of bring it in. You're going to be able to feel more into the vision now. You're going to be able to feel more into the expansion in your life that's happening right now. Yes, Jupiter is still moving pretty slow. Jupiter is still moving pretty slow. So I think that's some of the frustration that could happen is that we are starting to feel into the expansion, but it's happening at what we what feels like a snail's pace. You know what I'm saying? This is why it's really important to like, like chill, calm, and meditate, if you will, because then you could probably feel the expansion happening that much faster. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, in many ways, slowing down to meditate, and then when we can like kind of tune in and then feel that the expansion may seem, from one perception, very, very slow. But from another perception, it can be like sped up like three or four times. And then we can see that this thing is actually blooming really fast. Or sort of like looking at like a timeless video of like those cactus flowers, how, you know, they may be closed, but then when they open up, it may seem to the naked eye that's happening very slow, but it happens rather quickly, actually. And you can start to see it really bloom and blossom. That's where we are right now. But I think we're so focused and we're just watching it. We're like watching our lives and watching the things like, how come it's not blooming? How come it's not changing? It's like, just chill for a bit. Just chill for a bit. I promise you, it is going to bloom, right? Now, we're going to also see this moon that's going to make a nice little trine over to Mars as well. This will be happening at around 10 degrees, happening towards the later ha half of the day. Now, this is a nice degree that the moon is at because it's a very Taurian degree, 10 degrees. It's a number of manifestation, right? You already have the one, which is Leo energy, creativity, and your spirit. And then you have the zero, which is another placeholder, which can be impregnated by, which will be impregnated by the other one, and they'll become 11. And then that's how you really, that's like, in many ways, it's manifestation, but it's also like becoming that one, if you will. So, with this trine over to Mars, there's a harmonious aspect here, of course, where it's like, okay, we're definitely wanting to become the one, if you will. We're wanting to become like this new version of ourself. We're wanting to embrace a new version of ourselves. But really, this version of ourself isn't really new. This is who we always been and who we always are. This is our higher self. This is our most ancient self that is ever here, ever present, always was, always will be. So... Sometimes we like to look at it as such a futuristic thing and it's way out there, but it's like future and ancient at the same time, if you will. I know I'm kind of, this sounds kind of metaphorical and stuff right here. <laughs> I know this particular part, but I have to talk about it because I think it's really important. I think this is a day where <clears throat> we can really be inspired to really see our progress and be like, you know what? I have come far. I have come a long way. And you know, have a little bit of grace in yourself and give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back. Congratulate yourself for making it to this moment because it's a very powerful moment. 
And, you know, yes, we're about to go through a major, major transition as a human populace, a major transition. What an exciting time to be alive. So have some grace in yourself. Know that you are being looked out for. Know that you have guides and angels and ancestors that are looking out for you. Know that you have the power to create the life that you want. You really do. You absolutely do. And yes, it's going to require some work. It's going to require some effort, maybe even some blood, sweat, and tears. But it is possible. The fact that you can even think of it, the fact that you even have that imagination means that it already exists. Now it's time for you to match that vibration of your imagination and to bring it into this physical reality. We do, of course, have Venus, which is building up its square to Neptune, which is definitely going to be an interesting energy. And this may be a bit of a challenge when it comes to relationships and maybe a bit of a challenge when it comes to how we receive the greater vision and how we receive the dream, if you will, especially since this is going to happen at 25 degrees. So it's going to be very, very spiritual in nature. So just know that that's kind of building up right now. And it's putting a little bit of pressure on this time. But at the very least, this moon in Taurus is helping to kind of ground things so we can be a little bit more stable going into this weekend. Let's hop into the cards. car flew out and it didn't even fall to the ground. It just landed on my lap. Interesting. Oh, we have the chariot. This is a great card. This is talking, this is talking about success, arriving at your destination. Look, I mean, this, this is a beautiful card. Yeah, he's been carried by these two Broncos. You have the white Bronco and the black Bronco. And you can see that castle behind him. So this is, he's kind of leaving his comfort zone, but he's going out on the adventure. He's going to explore. And believe it or not, you are ready. You are ready to leave the homestead, if you will. You are ready to go out and explore and go on that grand adventure, you know. And, you know, maybe some of you guys actually are moving out. Maybe some of you guys are actually moving to a new city. Um, I, it'd be kind of interesting to do that with the Venus in Sag that's squaring over to Neptune. So definitely a pretty interesting time to do that. But I think also this speaks to the moon being on Jupiter today. And it's like, you know what? It's like you value yourself and you know your worth and you know that you can make it out there. So you go on the grand adventure, you know, and I think we're all are learning a lesson somewhere in that. Whether maybe you take on a position of management, maybe you take on more responsibilities at work. Uh, maybe maybe you actually maybe a project of yours that you've been working on. Maybe you really start to see a little bit of success in, with that or, you know, whatever. But this is about, in many ways, kind of leaving your comfort zone and having the confidence to know that you can make it in the outside world, if you will, right? We have that followed by, it's the death card in reverse. So the transformation has already happened, <clears throat> but we just don't want to be afraid of the transformation, if you will. We don't want to be afraid of things potentially falling out of our life that need to fall out of our life. You know, this is, it's reversed though. So this us we know that the transformation in many ways is, kind of already happened. Or maybe you're suppressing something. That could be another thing. Maybe you are suppressing the transformation and you're not wanting it to come through. And maybe that's where some of the discord that you may be feeling because maybe you don't necessarily believe in it. That could be the Venus squaring Neptune energy. But in many ways, this also is highlighting the sun on Pluto at the end of Capricorn. So I think we can feel that the way that society is right now is dying. This level, this stage is collapsing. The matrix is glitching, like hardcore. We can feel that. So, but that doesn't mean, just because the matrix is glitching, doesn't mean that you can't do anything. Doesn't mean that you can't move. Doesn't mean that you can't make changes. Doesn't mean that you can remain in your vibrational alignment and vibrational integrity, right? You can still move just because the matrix is glitching, just because things seem like it's crazy. I think some people are kind of waiting around for the whole thing to fully collapse and they're just not, but they're not doing anything. You know what I mean? So they're like kind of almost perpetuating, they're kind of procrastinating, if you will, 
And I think it's easy with to procrastinate with Saturn and Pisces. It's very easy to procrastinate with Saturn and Pisces and to get lazy. But I promise you, if you do the work with the Saturn and Pisces, that you will see returns 10, 20 fold. If you put in the work now, it's trust me, it's easy to procrastinate. It's easy to see time as an illusion. It's easy to sleep more like sleep is all over the place right now with Saturn and Pisces. I don't think anyone's really getting good sleep, you know, but if you put in the work now and that doesn't mean that you have to do a ton every single day, maybe some days you take five steps, maybe some days you take 10 steps, maybe one day you take one step, you know what I mean? But just keep up the consistency. That's what it comes down to. Bottom of the deck, I have the Princess of Pentacles. Yeah, as I was say, you can manifest and have beautiful things and stuff in your life. And this is the support that's coming in. And she knows her worth. She knows her value. That's what it comes down to. Say, like, do you know your worth and your value to go out on that grand adventure in life, if you will, and to seek getting to the next level? Don't be afraid of the next level. You are prepared. You are much more prepared than you realize. And that doesn't mean that you won't occasionally take some L's on the next stage. But if we're going to another level of this video game, and then we have to learn the different, you know, monsters and on that level and try to figure out how to fight these things, you may take a couple of L's. That's okay. You'll respawn, you know, you can save your progress and restart. You know, that's what going to sleep is. It's like you're responding, if you will. You wake up and it's another day. You know what I mean? So, yeah, sometimes we're going to take some L's in life, but you live to fight another day. And then you'll take some W's. That is going to do it for your astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you'd like to have a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Thursday. I will see you all on the next astrology forecast. Peace.